to. I heard you have a quiz for me. Oh, I get to give you the quiz too? Yeah. Oh, I almost showed her the answers. Okay. We're talking about home remedies. And just like I was speaking with Lonnie about what you can do, well, we have, there's a lot of crazy remedies out there. So let's find out what's true, what's false. So to reduce the symptoms of, say, a sore throat or upper respiratory tract infection, true or false, you should eat honey and lemon. Well, I just heard you suggest that to Lonnie, know, so I'm going to say true. <laughs> You're right. It is true. Ding, ding, ding. Lemon is, uh, may help cut mucus. It tastes really good. It clears people's mouths out. It's high in vitamin C, which is good for you. And the honey, there was a study, and I actually forgot to mention this. There was a study uh, maybe a year or two ago that found that children who took honey had greater relief of cough symptoms and sore throats than over-the-counter products. So that's really, really interesting. Yeah, yeah. And honey is actually a topically-based wound-healing substance. So for very intractable wounds that aren't healing, um, you put honey on it. And, of course, you always have to go through your physician first. Um, we don't want people doing this at home. Manuka <laughs> honey has been used in research. And what it does is the sugar in the honey keeps the bacteria away. And there's a substance called glucose oxidase. And what that does is creates hydrogen peroxide on your skin so it's antibacterial. So what is Manuka honey? It's just a type of honey that comes from a certain kind of a bee. You know, there's clover honey and, and uh, orange honey, and this is called Manuka honey, and this is the kind they use for medicinal purposes. And in fact, recently the FDA approved honey-based wound dressings in this country. Oh, wow. So that's very cool. So honey is pr a pretty awesome substance. And so what we need to do to keep our honeybees healthy and around is stop polluting the atmosphere, uh, make sure you're recycling, support your local farmers, reduce pesticides, because the honeybees, for some reason, are getting sick. So we have to look after them. I love it. We have a, a bigger message than just, than just the honey. That's now, right. can you buy Manuka honey at any supermarket? Uh, yeah, I've, I've bought it in the supermarket. But again, if you have an intractable wound that just won't heal, you have to see your physician because you may need drugs. You don't want that wound to go septic. You don't want your whole body to become Ooh. infected. So you have to be, you know, be careful. Talk to your doctor about this first. Just don't go doing it on your own. Okay, great. What is your next question for okay, me? Okay, true or false? Drinking orange juice cures a cold. It does not cure a cold. I will say false. Very good. Thank you. So you're never going to get sick. Well, we always think we need these mega doses of vitamin C when we get sick. And the reason we think that is back in the 1970s, a guy named Linus Pauling uh, had done some research and said if you mega dose with vitamin C, like 5,000 milligrams or more, um, you can cut colds in half, like about 45 or 50 percent. But what we found out in recent years with a lot more research is that's not true. But does vitamin C help you at all? It, it might help you if you're exercising uh, acutely, severely, or in cold environments. So combine that, like I saw someone out running this morning when it was freezing out, and, and if they're intense runners going for long runs, some vitamin C supplementation might be good. But for most of us, we get lots of vitamin C in fruits and vegetables, and most of us aren't eating enough fruits and vegetables. So if you eat them regularly, you won't need that bolus with C when you're not feeling well. So, but aren't fluids good for you when you're sick anyway? My mama was told, told me to make sure to drink a lot of fluids whenever I feel sick. I think we need to drink a lot of fluids all the time anyway, because our body's about 80% water, all of the body's immune systems function in a base of water. In the winter, when we get very dried out, our nasal passages, our lungs, that's when we're open to infection. So you do want to drink fluids and keep your body well hydrated to help your immune system get through the winter. So does, does that mean that I should get a supersized Coke at McDonald's or just drink a ton of water? True or false? A supersized Coke will help fight off infection. No, don't drink Coca-Cola. Don't drink soda. What about juice? People think juice is healthy, but doesn't juice have a ton of sugar? You know, sugar is not the issue really with juice, and sugar isn't really as bad as people think it is. Juice just has a lot of calories. So, you know, we say for adults four to six ounces of juice a day. If, if you want more, just, just adjust your calorie schedule with that. And eating the whole fruit is a little better because you get the fiber with that, and you'll eat less fruit than you will orange juice. Like how many oranges does it take to squeeze for one glass of juice, but eating one orange is usually very satisfying. Right. It takes three oranges because I used to work at a diner. Oh, and I used no, to have no. to squeeze the oranges to make the juice. But fresh squeezed orange juice is so good. I love it. I do love it. I was in Florida recently. I was speaking at the GE Global Leaders Conference. I did a whole bunch of different presentations on weight management, cardiovascular disease. And at this hotel, they served, they kept refilling your glasses with fresh orange, fresh orange juice. Now, I don't usually drink a lot of juice because of the calories. I had five glasses of orange juice. Oh, easily. It was amazing. And I also think I'd been traveling. I'd been running that morning. I was probably a little dehydrated, too. But it was so good. It's, I can see where you could want to chug down a whole gallon. Easily. It's an, it's an easy way to gain weight, though. Now, actually, have you had have you tried Trader Joe's fresh squeezed orange juice? I have actually. It's Isn't really, it so good? It's real, I bet the diner stuff you use to squeeze is better though. That's true. Unless, and, and but it's expensive. You know, if you squeeze your own oranges, or honestly, just to eat an orange, 
it's still pretty fabulous and you save money. Perfect. So what's our next question? Okay, next question. Oh, this is good. Hi. We have a dog. We have a dog. Hi, puppy. <laughs> Can I, pick, can I pick it up? Can I pick it up? Introducing Lucky. Introducing Lucky, the CBS dog. Uh, he, he's a boy. She will be appearing momentarily right here on CBS web channel. We're running after her. She is eluding capture, and she has eluded us. We have sent out uh, the helicopters to find her here in the office. We have security <laughs> chasing Lucky right now. Who let those dogs in? I got Sorry. so close, and I was like, Lucky, and then she, or he, she, she, she sped away. She bolted. Lucky wants nothing to do with me. Oh, someone caught her. Oh, they, they found her. She's cute. I wish you guys could see her. That's just what happens backstage. It's... I know. You see, this is, these are the things that happen backstage, then. That's how we have backstage lab for you. Anyway, so we were in the middle of <laughs> the quiz. A quiz. True or false, feed a cold, starve a fever. False. False. You're right. It's false. And it's not starve a cold and feed a fever either. Either way, it's wrong. And the reason is starving your body for any reason is not good. Your body needs that energy it gets from food to fight infection and to be healthy. So if you're not giving it that energy, you are more likely to stay sick longer or even get worse. In addition, you won't be well hydrated, and we just talked about that. We did. But where does that even come from? Who started that, that rumor? It's, it's a long time old myth. I mean, I think our grandparents were saying that. So I'm not really sure where it came from excellent any more questions yes, i do i have one more oh i have another one you ready for one more this is our last one so if i get this right i'll be yeah how is she doing so far she wins a trip to boca <gasps> wow <laughs> so far i have i'm um, three three for three right three for three yeah, doing great all right true or false chicken soup is <sighs> good for the flu i knew you were gonna ask me this <sighs> what do you think tweet in your answers yeah, wh what does our chat room think? Chicken soup, is it good for the flu? Come on, yes guys. Or no, guys. Or a cold. Or upper respiratory tract infection. We can, we can even divide it up that way. Yes. Um, are people, how about, how about you? as? Oh, my God. I think you were coming, so I got dressed up. Thank you. Because <laughs> you're beautiful. Oh, thank you. All right, uh, we got two trues. Two trues. Okay, yep. I'm going to add my true because... Like we just talked about, fluids are good when you're sick, and soup is fluid. Right. And that's, that's very smart of you to extrapolate that information. It's true, and a very small study says, and it's a small study, so we're not saying that this is absolute fact, found that actually chicken soup or any kind of soup and a lot of vegetables and broth reduced inflammation. <clears throat> Excuse me. We know inflammation is the cornerstone for disease. You reduce inflammation. Uh, think of a red throat, um, swollen sinuses. Reduce that inflammation, you will start to feel better. In addition, the researchers were saying that the warm broth, the steam from the broth, helps lo loosen mucus in your nose because right. it's getting moisturized and, and then the cilia can help fight off that bacteria. So it's not just chicken soup. They're not really sure, but any kind of soup, you could add a lot of vegetables, garlic, onion, uh, it tastes good. It feels good. And sometimes you don't feel like eating when you're sick. So it's right. a good way to get those fluids in as well. That's perfect. And you know, that explains why you, sometimes you get a runny nose when you eat chicken soup because it's loosening Partly, partly, and also it's vasodilating because it's so warm, you're getting warm. So a lot of that may be a response to that as well. Excellent. Well, those are your tips for how to stay healthy during this winter season. What would you say is the one ingredient or thing that everyone should have in their house in case you need an emergency home remedy? Oh, wow. That's a good question. I think stocking your pantry with healthy foods is a great idea. Like have the honey, have frozen vegetables around, have cans of beans, have whole grains, um, and, and at least have the healthy food there. But in an emergency, you may need to have some emergency medications, and that, that you need to speak with your physician about. Fantastic. I've got a question. Oh, okay. go Does back. Red Bull give you wings? Does Red Bull give you wings? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> and actually, I mean... That's a giant can of Red Bull. Usually I see the smaller cans, which are about 80 milligrams of caffeine. Yeah, so that's got to be like three times that. I had to import this from Germany. so uh... It's a huge can. <laughs> and, and here's my thing about energy drinks, which is if you need to be drinking a lot of energy drinks, and it's really the caffeine that's making the difference, even the ones with no sugar, really what that means is you need more sleep. You just need more sleep. And more sleep will also help you be healthier. It helps reduce the risk of obesity, of cancer, of diabetes, of heart disease. So sleep is something we all need more of. And if you're really, you know, hung up on the Red Bull or the other energy drinks, 
and, and you know the giant giant coffee Starbucks is coming out with what is it a oh, 33 ounce coffee so great I can't this wait for that are can you I serious? wait you it's can't... this big it is actually Titanic. it's actually more volume than the human stomach well 33 ounces I mean it's a big drink and it's and more it's... than the human stomach the average stomach can hold it's just gross Bryce <laughs> I mean, think, but think about it. 7-Eleven's got the, the big gulps. The big gulps. Oh, okay. So because 7-Eleven's doing it, Starbucks should do it. Exactly. Well, we're supersizing <laughs> well, super everywhere. And we this is America. This is America, okay? This is America. So the thing is, if you drink 33 ounces of lemonade, I just, I don't, I can't count the calories in my head. That's got to be 600, 500, 600 calories in the lemonade. And it tastes good, but it won't fill you up. And here you are drinking all these calories, and then you're still hungry, and then you go eat, and you wonder why you're gaining weight. Absolutely, I would hundred percent. Two hundred and ten calories. Come out with a smaller size. Two hundred ten calories. Yeah. Two hundred ten calories. About for how, for how many servings? Well, for th this whole can. Oh, but that's Red Bull, not the lemonade. Right. But it, but but two hundred ten calories. If you have three of those a day, is that <clears> a day? That's three hundred and thirty calories, and a hundred calories more than your body needs during the day for I know, about I know. a year. It's about ten pounds of weight gain. Now you're a thin guy, so yeah. he thinks he can eat anything he wants. He doesn't have to worry. Oh, just that's wait, definitely Bryce, not true. <laughs> that's oh, you know, definitely. Bryce actually lost a lot of weight. Oh, did you? Well, yeah, back back a long like time ago. yeah, a long Good time for ago. You. But this is only this is only for I uh, save these babies for Saturdays. That's just a Saturday dinner. The, that's okay. For the for uh the backstage. How the many early did you show. go through? Just this one. Just one. Okay. Okay. Just one. No, all right, I won't bust your chops. So that's okay. <laughs> what time did you wake up this morning, Bryce? Um, see, I didn't go to sleep, so. <gasps> you didn't go to sleep? I go right on through. I go right see, on through. See, that's, that's what we're talking about with the sleep. Yeah. Now, speaking of sleep, I actually have trouble sleeping. Mm -hmm. So what would you suggest? Do you exercise? Okay. See, that already means no. That look <laughs> on her face and that, that means no, I do not. Right. No, you need exercise. Cardiovascular exercise really helps with street sleep. It helps manage stress. It helps turn your brain off when you're you're lying in bed and your brain's going a million miles an hour. Um, so exercise is great for that. Uh, don't drink alcohol at night. We think it helps us sleep, but it actually wakes us up when we can't get back to sleep. Uh, watch your caffeine intake probably after about noon or one o'clock in the afternoon because it has a half life. It'll stick with you. Um, in terms, um, I know I'm, everything oh she's God. saying. I'm like, I do that. I do that. I do that. I don't take, exercise. Take a hot shower, bath before bed. Relax. Have your room dark and cool. Um, don't watch or read anything that that'll get you all jazzed. You know, do something relaxing or sort of mindless. Look at look through a magazine or whatever. Okay. Um, like give yourself time to calm down and, and focus and relax before you can't just get in bed and fall asleep when you're so stressed and you're running around and you're right. crazy. So get in bed, relax, have a, have a little ritual before you get in bed, you know, when you calm down and relax and focus and that will help you sleep too. Well, Samantha, thank you so much for all of these tips. I have a feeling I'm going to sleep very well tonight. Because you're going to go out and take a nice long walk and get some exercise. And I'm going to take a nap. I will. Even though it's freezing out, you have to wear layers. I know. Definitely. I will keep all of that in mind. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.